Hello, and welcome to the SolidCam introduction series of training videos. The topic for discussion in this video is HSS Express. HSS Express are available in all levels of SolidCam and is the first entry into 3D surface machining toolpaths we will be looking at. These are surface-based machining operations typically used for finishing. To activate an HSS toolpath, you're going to go to your SolidCam 3D tab and select HSS. HSS Express toolpaths are limited to parallel cuts linear and constant Z. Linear toolpaths cut back and forth apart at a known angle or direction. Constant Z toolpaths will slice the model at a Z level and cut around those surfaces at those levels. Let's focus on linear. The workflow for HSS, HSS is exactly the same as it is for all other toolpaths within SolidCam. Geometry, Tools, Levels, Technology, and Links. There is just more parameters with a more complicated toolpath. Let's start by selecting the geometry. So we're going to pick the geometry that we want to machine. In this case, we're selecting surfaces, not edges. I will come out and select the surfaces that I might want to machine. Take that grouping into my toolpath, and let's select a tool. In this case, this 3 8 ball end mill. Going back to the Geometry tab, Parallel Cuts Linear cut back and forth the part at a specified vector, in this case 0 degrees, running parallel to the x-axis. Let's get a toolpath on the screen by calculating. So what we can see is a toolpath that's cutting back and forth the part at the 0 degree vector angle. To change that, simply enter the desired vector that you want the toolpath to travel in. So in this case, 90 degrees to the x. The vector can be also specified by picking two points to define a vector on the part. You can define the vector points from any locations within the model or any points that you want, actually. So I might want to pick a, a starting point here, this vertice, for its start point, and on the ending point, this vertice right over here. When I calculate the toolpath, what we're going to see is that we have a toolpath that is now running parallel to that vector that we specified. Let's go ahead and let's change this back to 90 degrees. What you're seeing on the screen are some red movements which are going to the rapid plane. Those are link movements that are in between passes. Let's explore the links a little bit in detail. Under the link tab, we can control its approach into the first entry and the last exit independently from all others, but we also have the link motions that are throughout the, the transitioning portions of the toolpath as well. I can control gaps along cut or links between slices. And what we see here are links between slices of the toolpath. So we can see on small moves, it's set to direct. On large move, it's going to the clearance area. On these large movements, I can change this to go to the clearance area to let's say blend spline. Blend spline will keep full tangency from one direction and full tangency in the other direction give me a nice smooth connect move on and off of that pass. There is a long and a short threshold. So if we look very closely at the toolpath, we see we have some movement here that are going blend spline and others that are going direct. So some of these are falling within the parameters of a small movement and others are in the long. I can increase or decrease my threshold to change that, or in this case, I'll change the small movement to be blend spline as well. What this is trying to show is that there is a tremendous amount of control in your, in your tool path and how the tool enters and exits the, the, the parts at, the, at specific locations within the tool path. In the tool path parameters tab, under the sorting tab, you can change the behavior of, what, of which direction it's traveling. So in this case, it's zigzag cutting, cutting back and forth apart across the part. It's climb milling and conventioning milling. If you wanted to cut in one direction, you could pick one way and would cut one direction across the part and then relink each pass accordingly. In this case, we'll just leave that set to zigzag. I'm going to do a save and copy on this toolpath. A saving copy on the toolpath will give me a redundant toolpath, and let's change the characteristic from linear parallel cuts to linear constant Z. I'll keep all set parameters the same and let it recalculate. 
So now what we're seeing our Z, our, our toolpath that is cut, slicing the model at a C level and then cutting around those surfaces or along those surfaces at those levels. This is good for machining the steeper areas of the component, typically the more vertical areas, because as the surfaces shallow out, your step overs become greater and greater and then eventually miss that particular area. Now, I'm gonna do a save and copy again on this toolpath. And I'm going to switch this back to parallel cuts linear in, in, in li linear. From here, I'm going to collect a different grouping of surfaces. So I'm going to pick that face right there. Let's look at some of the behavior as it relates to dealing with gaps along the surfaces. So in this case here, we have a long gap that's in between the lanes of travel. So it sees lane, toolpath lanes here and here, and it considers that to be a large gap. Going to my link form, in this case, this is a gap along the cut. So I can change the behavior to, instead of going to the clearance area, I can tell it to move directly across a gap that is along the direction of cut and recalculate, and it will keep that tool down in that region, in, in that area. Now, there are many ways of dealing with this type of situation, and it's going to depend on your fixture and what might be in between this, but just understand you have got a tremendous amount of different capabilities based on these parameters. Let's set this back to clearance area. In the toolpath parameter form under sorting, we can cut in bidirectionally or, or like we're doing now, cutting back and forth across a part at a vector. And right now my sorting is sorting by lane. So it's seeing these and it's connecting these as being lanes of travel. I can also regionalize this and sort by regions. And what this will do is it will keep the tool down within a region and then it will machine that region out completely before moving on to the next. So if we look at this in simulation, let's slow it down just a little bit. It regionalized the area within the surfaces that we're machining. It will machine it out to its completeness before moving on to the next region or area. In the modify selection, there's various ways that you can additionally modify the toolpath. You may want to extend the toolpath off the exact edge of the surface. To do this, I can activate extensions. By using extensions, I can extend the toolpath out tangentially, tangentially or extensions on the sides. In this case here, I just want to go tangent in the direction. Though these tangent extensions can be a percentage of the tool or by a specific value. I might say a hundred thousandths of an inch. Recalculate that toolpath and you'll see it walks the toolpath off of those that surface so I get a nice blend and I'm not stopping and starting right on the exact surface edge of that surface. I'll turn those off and recalculate. That type of result can be also attained by using leads and links. So what we have are links between slices in this type of characteristic. I can tell it additionally, I want to use a lead in and a lead out on both small and large moves. From here, I can control the nature of what that type of lead move is. So in this case here, I might want to do a tangential line and give it a specified length, making the lead in and lead out the same. And I'm going to do that and anything that might be a long one as well. We'll go tangential line, specify a length and recalculate. HSX Express also has the ability to do collision checking. Collision checking can be defined by specifying different areas of the model that you might want to be cognizant of as well. So in this case, I can enable collision detection. By enabling collision detection, it will allow me to pick additional surfaces I might want to check against. I can either collision check against the full model that we defined in the setup, or I can pick individual surfaces. In this case here, we'll select adjacent faces again and hit calculate. Different things just to consider at different times depending on the part geometry. There are multiple levels of collision checking as well as what happens if it does find, define, find a collision. Does it, what is the, uh, the behavior that it does. Does it retract the tool? Does it trim and relink the toolpath? Or does it just stop the calculation? 
you have different levels of collision detection available to you. You can activate grouping two, and that will allow you to check against different sets of surfaces. When you activate group two, it enables a group three, and you can carry that theme out. So you can have different levels of collision de detection based on what it is that your end result is doing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please come back for future videos, and we'll look to see you again.